Joti, Obito Velocity. Say it, Obito Velocity. Again, Obito Velocity. So what the means of Obito Velocity? Define this so. But this the initial velocity required to place a planet, place as a, a, an artificial satellite into its desired orbit. The velocity as and the means of orbital. So orbital velocity is come from the word orbit. Okay? If you have any question, don't hesitate yourself to ask it in the comment section. Okay. So before I define the orbital velocity, I would like first of all to define the terminology that we heard in several times. I've been mentioning it several times, and this terminology goes to the orbit. What's the orbit? So orbit is a specific path taken by the planet or satellite to revolve around a heavy body in the universe. Write it. I won't write. This is a dictation. Write it. If uh, you can pause, you can repeat this video in order to get this definition. Orbit. What is orbit? Because I want to know if you are listening or you are just playing the, just playing the videos. Orbit is a specific path. What is orbit? Orbit is a specific path taken by the planet or satellite to revolve around the heavy body in the universe. Finally, I, let me repeat for the last time. Orbit is a specific path taken by the planet or satellite to revolve around the heavy body in the universe. I believe that you got it and you enjoyed it. So now let us come to the word orbital velocity. So this is the velocity which is required to be given to the satellites to orbit around them. So we have the term orbital velocity. Orbital velocity. So the question is, what is what is orbital velocity? What is orbital velocity? So we say that orbital velocity orbital velocity, we say that uh, orbital velocity is the initial velocity required. This is the initial velocity required. Initial velocity required by the satellite. Okay, initial velocity required by the satellite to orbit the Earth in or the planet. The planet in 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 the specific in the specific orbit. That's how we define the orbit of velocity. What is a bit of velocity? This is the initial velocity. Okay? Required by what? By the satellites. To do what? To orbit. To what? The planet. In the, in the specific orbit. So what does provide the initial velocity in the space there or maybe outside the Earth's surface? Then the source of the initial velocity is a rocket. The total rocket propulsion. Make sure that you go through the concept of rocket propulsion in Newton's law in this YouTube channel. Because there's a lot of things that we have learned and exciting for any of our students to understand them. Okay. So that is meanings of 40 or bit of a cost. So now we like to derive to do the derivations of 40, the general orbit of velocity, derivations of this orbit of velocity. Yes, and then computing its value. Yeah, the subject is still interesting. Okay. So now I want to take you to another concept which you call the derivation. Derivations of 40 of this orbit of velocity. Because 
it is initial, so it's common for all the or it's common, not common actually that you get out. Yes, it's common. You say that's common. Uh, is it common? Yes, there's a constant value of this orbital velocity. Right? In case that the we said that when the satellite's orbit is very close to the S's surface, there is a, a different definite initial orbital velocity. Okay? If the S, if the satellite revolving the S in a close, uh, in a very close orbit to the S, then the orbital velocity will be uh, known. Derivations of orbital of the formula, not of the orbital, derivation of the formula, of the formula, derivation of the formula, of finding the orbital, the orbital velocity, the orbital velocity, right? So let us learn how we can derive this orbital velocity, or the formula for the orbital velocity, or for finding what the orbital velocity. So we say that consider, consider the planet, not the satellite, of mass ms that orbit the s at the orbit and the orbit of head of head h from what the S is surface. S is surface. So this is the first step of our derivation. So we need to have a sketch that circular orbit. So that consider a satellite. Consider a satellite of mass MS revolving around the S at the height of H from the S's surface. One determine its initial velocity that we call it orbital velocity. So it means that the second step, let us sketch, sketch the orbit of 40 of the satellite. Okay, so we say that this is the S's surface, right? Suppose the S is a circular, and then this is the orbit of the planet, the orbit of the satellite, of the natural satellite. They say it is communication satellite. I like them because they are providing information which is a very important piece in human life. So this is the S, okay? So this is the S, we say that yeah, we have the two centers. Yes, this is the center of the S. Right? So this is the S's surface. Fall along this figure. S is surface. And then here, this is suppose that here we have mass of the S. Or we say that he not at this point, the best way or the best point is this point. This is mass of the S. So mass of the S, and here we do have radius of the S, R E, from here, from the S surface to the center of the S. Remember, this is the center, we call it O, so it's a center. Again, this is the height. So this is the height where the satellite has been placed. So for clarity, this is the height, and this height is measured from the S's surface. So this is the S's surface. 
This is the planet orbit, no, satellite orbit. And then this is the height H. This is the height H. So what is this? This is satellite, satellite sorting orbit. Again, suppose that here we have again the mass of the satellite. The mass of the satellite, this is S. Right? So what happening there? According to the Newton universal gravitational law, we say that the force of attraction, there's a force of attraction between the satellite and the, the S. Because these are the two bodies which are in the universe, and this force of attraction between them is then proportional to the product of the year masses and inverse proportional to the uh, square of the mean distance between the year centers. Right? So that the concept. So here we have force of attraction. Suppose that the mass of the S is here. So here we have mass of 40 of attraction. The S is attracting, or the S is being attracted by the, the satellite, and also the satellite is being attracted by the Earth, by the S. So that's the second step. So the third step, we say that to recall, or we have to refer, recall the Newton's, Newton's universal, Newton's universal, law or Newton's universal gravitation law. Newton universal gravitational law. So according to this law, we say that the force of attractions between the S and the sun and the satellite will be given as universal gravitational constant G multiplied by the mass of the S multiplied by the mass of the satellite and then this is inverse proportional to the mean distance or to the radius, which you call the R square, usual. This is according to the Newtons. So right now, we say that uh, in this case, this radius is equal to H plus radius of the S. You agree? Okay. So then we say that the force of attraction for this case is equal to gravitational constant times mass of the S, mass of the satellite, over the square of the radius, and this is equal to the gravitational constant, mass of the S, mass of the satellite, then the radius of the S is the height or radius of the S, called the RAE. RAE means R of subscript of E plus what? Plus height, and this is squared. Right? So this is first question. Why? Do you consider this because the distance from the center of the S, I mean that suppose that maybe the clear, uh, the clear notations is like this, let me do minor correction, excuse me. Uh, this is the mass of the S now. Okay, so here we have the S, and here we have 40 percent. So for this case, uh, this, this, the planet, the satellite is attracting the S and also the S is attracting the satellite. So now the distance between these two, uh, between these two bodies is radius of the S from here to here plus the height where we place the satellite on the S, from the S surface from here to here. Right? So that's the first equation. So because our desire, we need to find the orbital velocity. Then, in case of gravitation, I told you in previous lectures, especially that in lecture three and lecture four, or in session three, session four, even session two, two I touched a little bit about that. Yes, yeah, we are, I told you since the session two, session three, session four, I told you about centripetal force. And this uh, centripetal force, centripetal force is always acting toward the center. So the satellite, the natural satellite, the artificial satellite is the one that providing the centripetal force towards sorting the S. So that the third step. 
So the steady state we say that uh, recall the formula of 40 centri centripetal force and this we call TFC centripetal force. So from the concept or from the previous lecture, we said that the centripetal force is mass of the body, for example, the of the satellite, multiplied by the velocity of the satellite square, which is velocity of the satellite is Vs, over the radius square, radius of the body, radius of the radius of the satellite, right? So, but we say that, but for that case, from the figure below, the figure above, we say that, or figure in the previous column, we said radius of the satellite means from the center of the S to the satellite is equal to the radius of the S plus the height where we place the satellite. So if that the case you say that the centripetal force is equal to the mass of the satellite, velocity of the satellite, which is called the orbital velocity of the satellite, then you have radius of the S plus the height. Right? At the case. So suppose that this is the second equation. So if that the second equation, we say that, that the second equation, if that the second equation, say that that is fine. If that the second equation, then we say that according to according to Newton's universal gravitational law, right? We say that for the for the satellite to remain to remain in its orbit then the force of attractions between the satellite and the Earth should be equal to the centripetal force provided by the body by the satellite. Right? So this is the third equation I said. So we can equate now. We say that mass of the satellite times gravitational constant, mass of the S, then radius of the S plus height where we place the satellite square, this is equal to what? mass of the satellite multiplied by the orbital velocity of the satellites divided by radius of the S plus the height where we place the satellite from the OT, S is surface. So with this now we can simplify the mass of satellite, mass of the satellite, we reduce one sum of radius of the S and the height, and then we get to the gravitational constant then we have multiplied by the mass of the S divided by what? Radius of the S plus what? Plus height. And then this is equal to what? Velocity of the satellite square divided, no. Velocity of the satellite. So that's the orbital velocity. So it means that let Vs to be equal to be Orbital velocity. To be orbital T, orbital velocity. So then we say that the orbital velocity now, Vs, will be equal to the square root of what? Of gravitational constant times mass of the S over radius of the S, which is constant, plus height of the S, that which we don't know. So this will be the first formula for orbital velocity. Have you enjoyed? If you didn't understand, uh, you can review this video as well as you can uh, several times. So you can you can replay back. You can watch several times as well as you can for you to understand and grasp. And in case that you forgot, don't worry. We physicists. We don't claim the formulas. There's a lot of formulas, hundreds of formulas, hundreds of formulas in physics, so we cannot claim all of the formulas. 
we just remember where should we start and the steps that to follow to reach our destination. So this is the first formula of orbital velocity. So it means that it now may be clear orbital velocity to clarify this concept. And orbital velocity, orbital velocity, orbital velocity of the planet, on, of the satellite, I'm sorry, excuse me. This is equal to universal gravitational constant times mass of the S and divided by radius of the S plus the height of the S. Okay. Again, we can simplify further because, you know, Newton has given us a lot on this con concept of gravitation. Okay. So again, we say that he, uh, also from the concept, the concept of the weight of the satellite, the satellite to orbit the Earth, the weight of the satellite should be equal. So that force of attraction is doing a lot because it should be balanced. So there's a better force and also should balance the weight of the satellite. It should be equal to that, to the force of attraction. The force of what? Of attraction. The force of attraction between not between the satellite, between the satellite and what? And the S between the satellite and the S. Okay? So that's the concept that I want to share with you. Okay, so what does it say? So weight of the satellite should be equal to the force of attraction. Right? So this is going to be the force or the fifth equation. The fifth equation, because the fourth equation is this one. Suppose that this is the fourth equation. So then what the weight of the satellite, the mass of the satellite times gravity. So what the attraction, force of attractions, uh, it was equation one, equation two, equation one, equation one, it was, yes, it was equation one, which I, we, uh, I told you that mass of the satellite times universal gravitational constant times mass of the S, then multiply by, by, divide by what radius of the S, plus height of the S, and this is the square, right? So then mass of the satellites and mass of the satellite will cancel. So what remains there? Gravity. So gravity times this one. So make, gravity, make these products the subject. So if you make that the subject, you have gravitational constant, radius of the S, plus height square. This is equal to gravitational constant, mass of the S, and this is the sixth equation. Why did you deduce this sixth equation? We want to determine the orbital velocity in case that the orbit of the satellite is closer or is the closest to the S surface in such the way that the height from the S surface to the orbit of the planet is negligible. That's our interest. But so that's the focus of Sir Isaac Newton. Okay, so it means that if from these six equations, you find that it's closely related with the first equation. So it means that we can tell the first equation. I think that because they've been following some steps, we say that according to the Newton universal, this was the force state. Okay, force state of derivation. And now this is the fifth state. So I want to take you the sixth state. So the sixth state, we want to substitute equation six into equation four. That the sixth state. So the sixth state, we have to substitute equation six into into equation four. Right? So we say that orbital velocity v s square is equal to what? Is equal to uh, now g radius of the S plus H square 
plus what plus eight square and then this one we divide it in we sort radius of the s plus eight right fantastic so now we can simplify this to one of them so you find that the orbital velocity is equal to gravitational constant inverse no this is acceleration due to the gravity and then times what radius of the s this isn't oh 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 i made a mistake excuse me please let me correct this mistake in case you are considering the weight of the the weight of the satellite so the weight of the yeah, of the surface on the s's surface then this height where the satellite is should not be taken into consideration so here we have radius of the s square only that so even here we have radius of the s square so do that minor corrections and then even here we don't have this 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 kind of expression we do have what we do have instead of gme we don't have universal gravitational constant mass of the s then there we have what radius of the s plus h so this one replaced with g r e always and then divided by what is the radius of the s plus what plus h so then orbital velocity for this case will be equal to square root of 40 of g radius of the s is square then divided by what radius of the s plus h I would like to insist you something important you have to bear it in for the rest of your life. And this concept that is important, which you have to bear it for the rest of your life, is the constant or the relationship between universal gravitational constant, mass of the S, radius of the S, and universal gravitational constant. So, not this. In gravitation, you have to remember that universal gravitational, universal gravitational constant times mass of the S, this is always to acceleration due to the gravity, and then rad radius of the S squared. So bear this in your mind, please. Right? Because if you know, there's no need for you to write, but I have the reality to remind you, in case that you forgot in the previous lecture. So he said that our bit of velocity right now is equal to the square root of what? Square root of G radius of the S squared, divided by what radius of the s plus h so because this is a square root then if you square you find the square root of radius of the s then we find that this is equal to the radius of the s and then you have square root of what of acceleration gravity and then uh, we have again the square root of what radius of the s, sub sum of radius of the s, and the and height where we place the planet. So again, we say that the orbital velocity, orbital velocity, the formula for orbital velocity, also it might be given by this, by this one, square root of acceleration gravity, radius of the s, plus height h. So also this, the formula, for orbital velocity. Then here we have radius of the S outside the square root. Okay? So if that the case now, in case that we, we know, or in case that when the satellite is always in across the surface in the orbit of very close to the S's surface whereby so now we can say that so we say that the uh, determination not the relation now, we use that form of determination of orbital velocity of orbital velocity orbital velocity 
of the satellite. Of the satellite orbit near to the S. When we say that near to the S, it means that this A is negligible. We say that if the satellite is orbiting or revolving, is orbiting what? Is orbiting the S in such a way that in such a way that the height from the orbit of the satellite is there. Uh, the height is very, very, very small very, very small, such that radius of the S plus the A from the plus the A uh, plus the height of the satellite is very small. So this is approximately equal to the radius of the S. So what does it mean? For example, if you find that the satellite is revolving the S in 100, let's say, kilometers, so that is negligible because it's near the S's surface. Right? So if you neglect it, it means that we say the sum of the radius of the S and A, where we place the planet, is approximately equal to the radius of the S. Right? So from this case, now we say that the, from the formula of orbital velocity, which is equal to the radius of the S, then you have square root of gravitational constant, radius of the S plus H, but this H now is negligible. Then we say that orbital velocity is equal to the radius of the S, which is constant. And then we say that this is gravitational constant. And then this one is radius of the S, like this. So this will make what? So if you simplify, you inject, means you apply the radius of the S inside the square. Then you'll find that this is G R E square. And then divided by what is R E? So R E and R E will cancel. So it main result, so it means a bit of velocity right now is equal to the square root of gravitational constant times radius of the S. Not gravitational constant, excuse me. That is acceleration to gravity. Don't worry, uh, sometimes you can make correction. Mean that you can ignore how I wrongly pronounce some of the terms. Just take consecration of the notation, right? Don't think that this acceleration gravity today we can change it and call it a uh, universal gravitational constant. No, the universal gravitational constant is the capital G, right? So in case that maybe we had sometimes that I confuse these two uh, notations, you have to remember that it's just a human error, which I'm trying my level best to minimize it. So the orbital velocity now, orbital velocity, the initial velocity required for that satellite, it will be the square root of what? This is 9.8 meter per second square. Okay, and then the radius of the S, which is 6.4 exponent 6 meter. Right? So the orbital velocity for this case is equal to just to find the product for units, don't worry. So if you multiply these two quantities, you'll find that it is 7,919 7 7,919.20.596 meter per second. So, orbital velocity, this we can uh, approximate is equal to what? Uh, in physics, we approximate that this is equal to 8,000, right? This is equal to 8,000 meter per second, right? So therefore, the orbital velocity, in case that you'll be asking, then you have to follow all the steps that I told you to derive the formula, and then you determine it. It's not tough. I simplified. Can you imagine if you are 
learning yourself, you load the books, the physics books, you summarize, you get the concept, maybe this concept from Melcon, this is from Rocha, this is from uh, understanding physics, this is from university physics, uh, you take another concept from Chad one, you see, and then you combine them, and hence you'll be trying your level better.